Hi, this is Eddie from Dawa Maidenhead. Um, so this is another little tech update for you guys. Um, so today we're going back to, I would say the very beginning when it comes to setting up these devices. Today we've got a little four channel NVR with us, so net network video recorder. Um, and we're gonna show you what comes with it and basically how to assemble it, how to get it set up for the first time and what to look out for once you are getting into the program itself. So in your box, you get your little four channel recorder. You get four screws to hold on the hard drive to the chassis. You get a power cable. You get your data cable. You get a mouse. You get a little installation guide of how to put everything into your recorder. You get a little user manual that explains to you some entry level things on the recorder itself when it comes to setting it up. And you get a network cable. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the device. We are going to put in the hard drive. And for today, I've brought a one terabyte hard drive as majority of our devices being sold. Don't come with hard drives. That is more up to you and personal preference if you want a one two, four, six terabyte to eight terabyte hard drive. Um, also depending on how many cameras you are gonna have connected to your device and how long you want it to record. So today I'll just be using a little one terabyte hard drive for the um, setup purposes of this and my little handy little tool set that I use all around the office. And we are going to open up this device. We are gonna get the hard drive installed and we are gonna get this device set up. So there's four screws holding the top plate on. We're gonna take these screws off and we will now get into it, get the hard drive mounted and get the device on. We are gonna take the four screws off. So depending on the devices, your screws are in different locations. Some of them have four screws, some of them have six screws. It all depends on the recorder itself. So now we're gonna get this device open. That's it. Okay, so this is what you are going to see on the inside of this device. There's a little cooling fan. You've got your data connector and your power connector for the device. This is your little motherboard that runs everything and your hard drive will be sitting on these four spots here. So we're gonna get the hard drive connected quickly, get our cables in and get that all ready to go. So we are gonna put our hard drive in like this. You want your connection points to show into the direction that your connection points on the boards are in. So let's get this ready quickly. So once you've got that first screw in, it makes it a little bit easier for you to align everything exactly where you want it to be. So you can see our four screws are now in. Now we're gonna focus on getting our data and power cable connected. So the way you wanna look at it is, we'll start with the data cable first. You'll see there's like a little notch in it. If you look at it from a different angle, it almost represents an L shape. And if you look at your cables, they do the exact same thing. So with these cables, there are little clips on each end, which needs to go into the top side of the, the housing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our cable all clipped in so that it makes a nice little clipping noise. And the same with our power connector. So our power connector's got the little clip side on the front of it, and you want that little clip end to go over it as well. There we go, so all clipped in. So as you can see on your hard drive, you have only one way for the power connector to go in and only one way for your data connector to go in. So we're gonna get these all connected up quickly. Okay, there we go. So both of them are in. So um, today we're not gonna worry too much about actually neatening up the cables on the inside. You can put a little cable tie or a cable tidy um, pin in at the bottom here to get your cables all neat and 
held down so it doesn't get pushed out anywhere. So let's get this case closed. And then we are going to get this device powered on. What we're going to focus on is the back. So you heard me say in the beginning here that this is a four channel NVR. However, there are no points at the back here to be found. So the way this particular device works is you need a little PoE switch um, that has maybe four to eight ports on it. I would recommend eight because um, you'll have your internet cable going into that device as well, along with your four cables. And then you're going to have one dedicated cable coming from your PoE switch into the back of the recorder to bring your devices onto this to be displayed then onto your screen. So we are now going to get everything connected up. I'm going to start with our mouse. There are two dedicated USB ports, one at the back, one at the front. Um, I generally recommend plug your mouse into the back and use a dedicated front port for if you need to retrieve footage off of the device, then it's just a lot easier. A lot of people do mount their devices in um, different angles. So your USB is going to go in there. We are then going to get our HDMI and power cable connected. It's just going to go in right here next to the port. And our HDMI is just going to go right next to the USB slot there. And then if you don't have a screen that facilitates HDMI, you can use VGA if you would like to do so. So let's get these devices now on, on display. That's our little 4 Series recorder there. And let's get that on. So they generally take a little bit of a while to start up for the first time. We're going to start um, the initialization process in a couple of seconds. We're going to choose a password. I'm just going to use something simple today, but we generally recommend make it something that suits you, something that you know a lot of people won't use or try and guess. Um, after all, this is a surveillance product. It's there to keep eyes on your property and keep eyes on what you do. So we are going to go into the main menu. We are going to open it up. So what we are first going to look at is our time and date settings on this recorder. You want everything to be on day, month, year. 24 hour, you want your DST to be enabled. That's daylight saving time. We're going to put that to week. Your first um, startup time, you want to have on March. You're going to have the day on last the from the week's day you want to have on sunday and that's going to be zero one zero zero and your end time is going to be in october last week of the month on sunday and zero two zero zero we are then going to go save and apply so that all the settings um, get recognized on the board itself we are then going to right click to go back. Now it's going to come to the network side of things. I'm not going to go in too much detail. That could, that's going to be in a different video on how to set up cameras from scratch and how to get them initialized onto your recorders. Now we're only going to focus on the network side of things to get your recorder online. In VR, there's generally two different types. So because it's going to be connected to a switch, the switch are going to dedicate IP addresses to your cameras, which would be under the same range as 192, 168, 1, 108, depending on what your ISP puts out on your network. So it could be dot zero, it could be dot three, depends on your ISP at home. What we're going to do is we want everything to be set to DHCP. You'll see everything will go to zero. I'm going to OK. I want my preferred DNS and alternative DNS also to be set to DHCP and then I'm going to apply. Once you apply that and you reboot your system, it will then generate what your network pushes out to be, whether it is 192.168.3.5 and then on your alternative, your default gateway, you want that to then obviously take over if it's 254 at the end or 5 or whatever it may be. This recorder will then take over the information of that network, which would then, in return, if you go 
to network and you go to P2P, your status then should go online. So bearing in mind, our recorder is not plugged into any form of a network, so it will state that it's offline. But if you have yours plugged in and you know your network is connected and running, that should then have no problem going online. And then once you are ready, you want to get this device connected to your mobile device on DMSS, which is the app that uh, Dawa designed. And you would then scan the device serial number to get that um, app loaded onto your device so that you can see your cameras live. If you don't find the app, you can always scan the cell phone client. That will then open up the allocation of where the, uh, to find the app and to download the app. But from there, everything should be good to go. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification for more videos to come. And hope you guys have an awesome day.